So this is our one-cylinder four-stroke Briggs and Stratton engine. You know, effectively, it's a riding lawnmower engine. Um, what I'm going to do here is just demonstrate how we set everything up and even demonstrate how one would take the data. Uh, but when we run the thing, it's going to be very loud, so it's not clear whether you're going to hear me real well. I'll try to talk, um, but I'll also show you what happens while we're running it. So the first thing we want to always do is, you know, make sure that we have our water supply to the dynamometer. This is a water break dynamometer. There's a very small water break right here, which we'll see when the camera comes around this side. Um, so first, we're going to have to turn on the water supply from the building. So just turn that so the valve handle's in line with the tube, which is always the case. And then this one gets turned on the same way. So that provides water. And then this is the valve that we're actually gonna use to control the water supply. Um, we're not gonna provide any water until we're ready to run it. Um, when we read our data, um, we're gonna read the load on the dynamometer. Um, now, the load on the dyno here, why don't we come around this way? Um, it's actually, <laughs> this is so old too. This uses an old fashioned hydraulic load cell, all right? So this is the hydraulic load cell and it provides oil pressure to the gauge, and that's what's reading the load. Now that load is at the end of the moment arm, so technically if you multiply the moment arm by the load, that's the torque, right? Um, now, we're just gonna read the load, and then through calculations, we'll be able to figure out what the torque is and what the power is and all that. Um, here is the water brake dynamometer, as I've just mentioned on the other side. Um, now, <clears throat> when we record the speed, the speed, and again, I'll have the camera come over here. Um, there's an RPM gauge right on the front, but as you're gonna see as we run this engine, there's a huge amount of vibration really to the point where we can't even read the, the gauge particularly. Now, we have tried everything we've, we can to try to reduce or eliminate the vibration. Um, you know, all, all these uh, rubber mounts have been replaced and uh, nothing seems to work. So what I have is a uh, electronic RPM meter or tachometer, if you will. Um, this one is actually a optical tachometer. Um, there's a piece of magnetic tape here. I'm sorry, not magnetic. There's a piece of reflective tape that I've actually put um, right on the coupling, you know, which is part of the shaft. Um, so when we point this at the shaft, um, the light is going to reflect back from the tape here, and maybe you could see it, you know, you could see it there. Um, it'll reflect right back as this thing is spinning, and then it's going to read the speed right here on the tachometer, okay? So we're more or less ready to start running the thing. Um, I'm going to make sure that it's ready to go. Now, to start it up, um, I'm just going to make sure that the choke is on. So um, let me have the camera come over again this way. So this is a choke switch. We'll move the choke to on. Sometimes when the choke is on, it actually causes the engine to sputter, so I, I may have to turn the choke off. Um, then we also have the throttle, which is just, you know, manual. And we're just going to move this towards the rabbit. You know, there's a little icon of a turtle and a rabbit, or if you will, a tortoise and a hare. So tortoise basically means, you know, minimal throttle. Hare means maximum throttle. And then we'll have to make sure we turn on the electric supply. Um, so we put that switch on. Um, and then the fuel is actually measured here. Now, again, this is a very old fashioned, um, but... Um, you know, unfortunately, electronic fuel flow meters of the low flow variety are incredibly expensive, hundreds of thousands of dollars. Um, this is just a, a plastic cylinder. It costs two bucks. And we're just going to measure the fuel flow rate manually. We're just going to see how long it takes for, um, you know, five or 10 milliliters of fuel to flow into the engine. Typically, I use 10 milliliters or 10 cc's, if you will. Um, you'd use your own stopwatch on your phone or your watch or whatever. And then you'll see how much time it takes to put 10 cubic centimeters of fuel into the engine. You divide one into the other, and there's your volumetric flow rate. Um, of course, you're also going to need the specific gravity, so don't forget to you know, use the hydrometer at the beginning and make sure you know, therefore, what the density of the fuel is you're using. You, you'll have to use that right, to convert from volumetric into mass flow rate. Um, so we're basically ready to go now. Um, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to have Dave, our lab technician, come over here briefly and start the thing up. Um, so let me just kind of move out of the way. And once it started, then all I'm going to do, actually, hold on just a second. Once it started, what I'm going to do is then I'm just going to adjust the load in one pound increments. Um, you'll see that that'll cause the speed to drop every time I increase the load. Um, when the load's at one pound, I'll use this to record the speed. 
I'll record the load in pounds. I'll do the fuel flow measuring. And when that's done, well, then we'll just increase it by one pound of load and we'll do it again and again and again until we're done. So again, I'm probably not gonna be able to speak while that's happening or I'm not sure if you're gonna be able to hear me. Um, by the way, um, there is a little valve in the fuel line. So, you know, make sure that the valve handle lines up with the tubing, which tells you that we have flow. So now we can go ahead and start up the engine and hope for the best. appropriate position. <laughs> so first of all, I would note that we really don't have any load on it at the time. I'm going to adjust the load up to one pound. Um, when you're running the experiments, you'll let it run for five or ten minutes to warm up. But then again, our lab technician was out here earlier and was running the thing. Um, so it should be plenty warmed up by now. Um, we'll make sure that the throttle is in the run position. that the choke is off, which it is. And now I'm just going to bring it up to one pound of load. Well, clearly the load meter is vibrating quite a bit. Maybe we should let it warm up a little bit more. It just seems like it is getting a little more steady. But nonetheless, you can see we're at about one pound. It's not critical that you have it exactly at one pound, but just make sure you record the data accurately. Um, you can see how much the tachometer is moving around. So I'm going to go ahead and point this at the magnetic pickup. and then we'll increase the load. So we'll open up the valve a little bit more. Bring it up to about two pounds. Um, again, a lot of vibration, but we'll do the same thing all over again. The speed has dropped a little bit. Whoops. And then we'll do the fuel flow measuring again. And I think you get the point, right? We're just going to continue like this, um, you know, continually changing the load. The speed will drop, the fuel flow rate will change, and you'll record this until we can go as high as we can. So <laughs> typically we'll run it and load it up to about eight or nine pounds. And then the speed will probably drop down to somewhere near 3,000. So I'm just gonna record one more. And, sorry? The speed is definitely dropped. And then that will be our last data set. So when we're done, we'll just turn it off. We'll unload the engine just by turning off the valve. 
moving it clockwise. And then to start the engine, we'll just push that little red switch. And there you have it. So again, this is rather loud, but that's just the way it is. And then of course, when we're done, um, you know, let's just make sure we turn off these valves. We've stopped the water flow to the dyno. And this is your Briggs and Stratton engine experiment. By the way, for this experiment, we're only gonna run it at wide open throttle. I mean, if this were on a lawnmower, you know, you're, you're rarely gonna run the thing at any kind of partial throttle, right? Um, now that doesn't mean we couldn't, if we wanted to run the experiment, uh, certainly we could have adjusted the throttle down to you know various throttle settings and taken more data and had a family of curves that we would be able to plot but uh, that's typically not going to be part of this experiment